You damn right. It is recruiting hour time on a Monday. Hope everybody had a good weekend. Uh, Longhorn basketball, good news, bad news. Good news on the women's side. They're still alive. Bad news on the men's side. They are not. Uh, and we had a practice today on a Monday. Uh, spring practice continues for Texas football, and we're going to break it down. I'm Chad Hastings. Our man Jeff Ketchum is back from all of his craziness last week, but he came back sick. So we're letting him rest up today. Hopefully he's back on Wednesday for the recruiting hour. But that is, of course, Jason Sukamel, managing editor of orangebloods.com. He uh, had a bit of an interesting weekend because he got to hang out with some Elite 11 talent. Uh, we're going to get uh, some of that and uh, and a little bit more. Jason, how are you? I'm good, dude. Uh, better than catch him, apparently. But yeah, oh. yeah, I'm good, man. It's long, busy weekend. Like I think that's three weekends in a row. I've been at camps. And then uh, next weekend is Texas Relay, so I'll be out there. And then I think maybe the weekend after that I get a, maybe a bit of a breather maybe. Oh, no, no, what am I saying? The weekend after that is when I go to New York. So, yeah, yeah, yeah well, I can't complain about that one, right? So, I was going to say, you get a breather in the Bronx is what you get. Yeah, yeah you'll, right. you'll gladly do that one. Uh, we got people already jumping in the chat. Uh, BT, happy Monday to the OB family. What's up, BT? And then we just get a just a hell yeah. So, okay, we'll take a We'll take a hell yeah on a Monday. Um, Jason, you were uh, able to get to, this was a, an elite 11, like a qualifying camp where you, of this yeah, weekend. That's exactly right. It's different though. It's an elite 11 regional camp. You know, they have them all over and then they hand out invitations for their big national camp, which I don't, you know, I, I don't know when it is this year. Last year was in June. So it's usually around that time, but um, that's out in Cali, but this was a regional camp and they handed out three uh, invitations to the, Elite 11 national camp, but they also had, and I think this is the first year they've done this. They called it an all 22 camp. So they had uh, some linemen there and defensive linemen. Uh, they always have receivers out there working with the quarterbacks, but they had some tight ends and running backs and things. So a little bit different. They work those guys, uh, work those linemen in the morning and then the, the quarterbacks and the receivers and everybody uh, came out later in the day. So let's start with the quarterback and uh, it's KJ Lacey, the quarterback commit in the 2025 class for Texas, uh, what stood out to you about KJ? You know, KJ, it's I, he, he wasn't perfect. So I'm not going to sit here and say, oh, he was flawless and, you know, no doubt five-star, but he was really good. He was one of the better quarterbacks out there, as you would expect. You know, a lot of this camp was uh, kind of throwing off schedule stuff. They make them throw on the run and throw across their body and throw with, got you know, simulated pressure. So it's a lot, it, it kind of, you get to see KJ, which in, what I think is kind of what some of his better element. He does a lot of different arm angles and kind of improv improv improvisational things when he is on a football field. So he was able to showcase some of that uh, on Sunday at this camp. We didn't really get to see those dudes just drop back, set their feet, and just let it rip a lot. I would have liked to have seen that a little bit more. You know, let's see him throw some deep outs and things like that. It was a lot of more throwing on the move in things. But, yeah, I thought KJ had a good performance. He was one of the guys, one of the three guys who did get a uh, invitation to the National uh, Elite 11 competition. So he obviously was good enough for that. Uh, I know, uh, you know, Rivals had a ranking, and I think they had him as one of the top performers at the at the Elite 11 camp, maybe third or something. So uh, good, good performance overall for KJ Lacey, as you would expect. You know, he did come in for this camp. Uh, just, just kind of fortunate that the, that the camp in um, in Austin, and then he was able to go to the, the Texas practice today. Uh, so it kind of coincided, hey, let's go hit the camp, then go work out or go, go see the Texas practice on Monday morning. So uh, good, good visit for KJ, I'm sure, overall. But uh, yeah, good camp as well. Yeah, we had talked about that last week that some that obviously these recruits can do what the rest of us don't get to do is go see an entire practice. And so yeah. KJ was one of those guys doing that today. So now moving forward, Jason, let's get everybody updated because we've got obviously we've been talking about the craziness of April and then there's craziness coming obviously in June with official visits. What do we know about KJ and his schedule? Um, and, you know, what do you tell a Longhorn fan right now in terms of the confidence level that everything is going to, you know, going to stick in 2025. Yeah. I think I would tell Longhorn fans, be happy. You know what? Be happy. He visited today. He's coming back uh, April 6th. Uh, so two weekends, uh, my, my New York trip weekend, he'll be in Austin again with a lot of these, uh, some of the other recruits that are coming in. Uh, he's coming back for the spring game chats. That's three visits in mm -hmm. what less than a one month span. And then he's got his official visit in June. So 
that is a uh, pretty telling Dean. So that's, you know, four visits in the span of a couple months. And we asked KJ, I said, do you have any other visits, either unofficial or official besides Texas? And he said, no, nothing on the, on the calendar, which was a little bit of a surprise. You know, I thought maybe, oh, I might pop over to Auburn or Alabama or something. Uh, some of these schools he's visited before. You know, he did say schools like Auburn, uh, Ole Miss, and Oregon still continue to recruit him. But he seems pretty happy with, with his Texas commitments. You know, I thought, okay, when he first committed, I thought it, it was in June of last summer, I believe. So it was really early. Uh, and I'll kind of go back to the backstory of his commitment. But it was really early. And I thought, okay, Texas is going to have to really fight to hang on. This is an out-of-state quarterback. He's a top national player. Then he ends up taking a bunch of these visits to really um, Auburn and, and uh, Alabama were the two main schools he visited just to go see games and things like that. And then I started to think, OK, I'm going to put this at about 55, 45 that Texas holds on to his commitment. I thought they would, but I thought it was going to be pretty close. I think right now, man, he's about as solid as I can ever remember him being. I think he's pretty well locked in. I'm not saying he's not going to eventually show up on an Auburn campus for a game or something like that. But uh, I think he's pretty well locked in for his uh, with his Texas commitment. He told me, I said, hey, man, I said, you take a lot of visits. I said, you and I have talked about this, KJ. I said, you always tell me, like, dude, I just like going to big football games. I like college football games. I love the atmosphere. I'm a fan. Like, he went to the Iron Bowl last year. I said, what do you tell Texas fans? He goes, he goes, yeah, man, I just I like to go to those games. And he goes, now that Texas is in the SEC, you know, maybe they play in this region. I'll be able to go see them. You know, I might have to go see them at an opponent's uh, on an opponent's field, but um, kind of, you know, in his own way of words, it's like, hey, man, just calm down, guys. It's okay if I go enjoy my life a little bit and go watch a little football. But, you know, KJ is interesting. Like, and I wanted to circle back to his commitment, Chad. Um, he visited uh, about a year and a half ago with, uh, or maybe it was about a year ago, I guess, with a seven on seven team. So just a group visit, right? And that happens a lot. And there's, you know, 10, 15, 20 guys that come through. Well, he loved that visit, and those visits rarely are are, are productive. Not, they're usually not. It's just kind of like, hey, let's meet everybody. Maybe we hand out a couple offers, but it's not productive in the in the way of, hey, we're going to win a guy over. Well, KJ Lacey came in with the seven on seven team, loved it, went home, told his parents, like, hey, man, I'm really digging that visit. Like, I think I want to commit to Texas. And they, mm -hmm. they were like, what? Let's do it, dude. So, like, the sight unseen. His parents had never met the coaches. They'd never been to Austin. They came back in June with KJ and he committed on that June visit, just like he had told him he wanted to. So I asked him about that. So your parents must be really comfortable with, with your decision-making. And he goes, yeah, you know, they, they kind of let me do my own thing. And they, they, uh, you know, have confidence in that I'm going to make a decision that's going to be good for me and make me happy. And he said, they've been supportive of me, of me ever since I made that commitment to Texas. I, just, I thought that was a pretty cool story that mm -hmm. You know, they are certainly not helicopter parents the way you see some some parents are, obviously. But they had enough. And that tells you what kind of maturity and what kind of kid K.J. Lacey is, right, where they can put their trust in him. Like, hey, we're going to let we're going to send you off to this college. We're going to approve of that. Uh, we're going to welcome it. And we've never even been there. We've never seen the campus. We've never met the coaches. But K.J., if that's what you want to do, you've got our full support. Yeah, even at this level of you know high level college athletics, it still is that old story of the parents aren't going to school, the kid is, right? Maybe they're just thinking, look, if you got to go, you got to be the one to to deal with it. Some so, parents don't remember that sometimes. I know that's right. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm trying to remind myself that for a couple coming up in about a year or so, uh, that it's going to be that case. So uh, in terms of, so let me just make sure we're updated because I feel like we always end up going back to the Iron Bowl with this guy, and you mentioned him literally going to the game. But as we sit here right now. As far as you're looking into the spring, no unofficial visit scheduled for Auburn, no unofficial for Bama, no official for either one at this point. Mm -mm. And then for you, I, I, I feel like we always talk about a version of this, but as far as you can tell, Kalen DeBoer's crew, any extra attention for KJ Lacey yet or not? Not any attention at all, which is a bit surprising. He did go up there. Uh, right after they got hired, okay, with his teammate Ryan Williams, who ended up signing with Alabama, and they kind of told him, "Hey, we're gonna we're gonna continue to evaluate you." He doesn't even have a formal offer from the new Alabama staff, so a hmm. little bit interesting. Like I'm looking in the rivals database, I'm showing two visits to Alabama, in I want to say it's probably been more than that, but there are one, two, three, or five visits to Auburn he's taken. So he's been on these campuses a bunch, right? You know, he 
uh, obviously he's visited Texas multiple times and we discussed he'll have several other uh, visits come up. He visited Florida State. I think he was down there for a seven on seven type deal. So he's taken several visits to those in-state programs. But no, Alabama is kind of just, I don't want to say slow playing him, but that they kind of are this new staff. They want to continue to evaluate him this spring. And I don't know what their quarterback situation is or who their their main targets are, but uh, it's not KJ Lacey for Alabama right now. Couple of comments here on the chat. Jason Stanley's throwing in a comment. It involves that A word. Uh, surprised <laughs> Lacey stayed with us uh, with Arch and Owens ahead of him. Um, obviously, Arch Manning is a part of the of the future coming up for Texas, and any quarterback needs to know that. Have you talked to KJ at all about Arch and any other quarterbacks that would be there? Uh, not about Arch, but I'll say this about KJ and Trey Owens, for that matter, too. Uh, those dudes aren't afraid of competition. I mean, if you're a, if you're a high level quarterback, those guys really are never afraid of competition. In fact, we talked to KJ uh, this weekend about, hey, what if Texas brings in two quarterbacks in your class? And he kind of shrugged it off because you know, we'll go there compete, and try to win the top job. So um, you know, everybody thought whenever Quinn Ewers came back, then that kind of pushes Arch's timeline back a year. Everybody then thought, uh oh, that might impact KJ Lacey because then he's probably going to have to sit behind Arch for a couple of years. Well, uh, doesn't seem to have impacted him at all. As I said, I mean, he's he seems about as so solid as I think I've ever seen him with this Texas commitment right now. So, you know, he understands. Listen, I mean, in KJ's mind, he'll probably tell you, hey, I'm going to come in and compete with Arch. You know, I remember Trey Owens told me that. He goes, I know it's Arch Manning, but Trey said, hey, man, I'm coming in there to compete with Arch. And if I, I'm going to try to win the job. And if I don't, I'm going to – push Arch to make him, make him better. So these guys are ultra competitive. And I think KJ Lacey probably has that same mindset. Hey, I'm going to come in, compete with Arch. If I have to sit behind him for a year, maybe two, then I'll, then I'll battle it out with Trey Owens and whoever, whoever else, whoever else Texas recruits and, and try to win that top spot. Stanley, appreciate the chat. Uh, also appreciate Blake jumping in. Says, I think it's interesting that Sark has a guy like Trey Owens, who's 6'5", and then Lacey, who's less than six foot. I think you'll see him listed at 6'1". He's we'll not 6'1", but yeah. Yeah, yeah <laughs> listed at 6'1", but we see what you're doing there, Blake. Uh, yeah, one of those two will take over after Arch, uh, at least in, in uh, Blake's opinion. And I just think it's cool the size differences, but that is a, a fair thing to bring up, I guess, Jason, for people who've already seen Trey Owens, certainly got a, a different frame than what KJ Lacey will bring. Yeah, absolutely. And I, you know, I wanted to eyeball KJ this week and really get a good look at him. He's got a full head of hair that stands up about three inches. And I'm joking. I was like, I wonder if he does that on purpose. So that it makes him look taller, but you know, I'm, I'm right at six foot and KJ, I would probably say is a shade under six foot. Um, I don't know what he, officially measured this week. But, you know, the thing about KJ, and, and, and listen, I mean, Steve Sarkeesian did it with Bryce Young. He's a smaller quarterback. So, and they've even compared KJ to Bryce Young, said, hey, you got some sim similar qualities and just the way you play and probably obviously, obviously height-wise too. But, you know, I mentioned that KJ is really good about kind of manipulating arm angles and things like that. And he'll throw it under a defender's arms, if, you know, if you ask to, to get it where it needs to be. So, the height thing I don't think is a huge factor. Yeah, I guess in a perfect world, you'd love for him to be – you'd love for all your quarterbacks to be 6'5 or something. But, mm -hmm. yeah, you know, KJ does a good job of um, kind of overcoming the, with some of those obstacles that come with being a shorter quarterback. Uh, we also had John jump in the chat, say, guys, love the content. I just think the guy loves Texas. You know what, John? I think you're right. We didn't mention this detail, Jason. Everybody knows I love goofy details. While you were talking to KJ Lacey, was he wearing anything that jumped out to you at all? Yeah, I didn't notice it during the camp, but when I talked to him, he had a, a Longhorn uh, necklace on with a with a Longhorn pendant. So I made sure to get a picture of that. And I didn't ask him to. He threw up the horns when I took his picture. And that wasn't something I staged. You know, a lot of times guys, hey, we throw up the horns. No, KJ threw them up on his own. So he was definitely representing Texas out there at this camp, uh, representing them proudly. There you go. And I'm not saying there aren't recruits out there that might have like 50 different necklaces and they just change them at every yeah. practice. But, you know, it's, that's a good indicator. If I'm a Texas fan. Some of these guys, like uh, they'll change gloves. They'll wear like Texas gloves one day or maybe an A&M gloves at a different camp. Or right. they have 20 bracelets of the places they visited. Now, KJ Lacey was one and one only. 
So there it is. There you go, Texas fan. So, John, uh, I think you are right. And he does, he does seem to really like Texas. Getting some good stuff in on the specs chat. Our man Money B has a question. We'll throw it, Jason. We're going to talk about a big-time offensive lineman coming up and another quarterback name for you to pay attention to. Jason just told you K.J. Lacey's not afraid of competition. Well, he may get some. We'll, uh, we'll talk about that in a second. First, though, let's tell you about specs you're needing specs same day delivery can save the day with our specs app or online shopping from world-class wines to hard to find spirits and craft beers to gourmet foods delicious snacks and spectacular sweets it's specs cheers to savings yeah if you're a texas basketball fan you probably need to restock at specs after that first half against tennessee wow wow and the first half of the, the first round game for that matter. Yeah. <laughs> That too. A, lot of, a lot of first halves with that Texas basketball team. Yeah. Broken bottle uh, phone booth <laughs> bar fights for Texas in those uh, in those instances. Shout out to Specs and thanks to them for being a great sponsor of the chat. Uh, Jason, before we get to the offensive line discussion, Money B threw in a quick question for you. Any updates on Andrew Marsh and the and his visit? Yeah, he was at practice today. I saw that. Um, nothing really, money. I haven't checked in with Andrew. Or, or people close to him. Um, he was always planning to visit this spring. He's maybe coming back for the spring game. He's got an official visit. You know, he's really not thinking of making any kind of decision till I think it's November. Um, and he's always going to take a ton of visits. So always good to get him on campus. But like I've said, Andrew doesn't let many days go by where he's not visiting somewhere. So, you know, I'll touch base, base with him. But I don't anticipate that today was the type of visit that probably moved the needle a ton. He's been on campus eight or nine times already. He'll visit a lot of other places. I don't have it pulled up in front of me, but I talked to him uh, at the Houston. What was that? Just not this last weekend, but the weekend before. But yeah, I talked to him at the Houston Under Armour camp and he has a ton of unofficial visits on the calendar coming up and official visits for that matter. So, you know, good to get him on campus, but I wouldn't think, today would be a day that really probably changes a whole lot in his recruitment. All right. Recruiting hour on a Monday. We talked a little KJ Lacey. Now, uh, Jason, let's go to the offensive line. When you let me know we were talking about this guy, I refresh myself by checking out some of the highlights. Uh, love this. Uh, well, like I've said, big time offensive lineman with a basic name, Lamont Rogers. <laughs> I love the way it rolls off the tongue. And when you look at his highlights, it's impressive. So this is Mesquite Horn High School, which I don't believe existed when I was going to high school. I think I'm that old. Um, let's talk about Lamont, um, kind of where things are. This is an undecided kid at this point, correct? Yeah, undecided. Uh, the first thing with Lamont to mention, we didn't get, it was weird. Like media check-in for this camp was at 1030. Well, the offensive linemen and defensive linemen were competing well before that. So we didn't get to watch him compete, but that's okay. I saw Lamont uh, competed in Under Armour camp recently. He's got a shoulder and a sling, so he's a, not quite a hundred percent, but he did win offensive line MVP at this uh, all 22 camp on Sunday. So clearly he did well. Uh, Lamont is a massive human being, six, eight. Uh, we got him at 305. He He's every bit of 305. I mean, I jokingly said when I take his picture, I'm like, dude, I got to hold my camera up here to, to take your picture. <laughs> Otherwise, I'm taking the bottom of your chin. You, have to, uh, you can get a selfie stick just to yeah, do exactly, or climb up on a, a ladder or something. But he's a he's a big dude, big human for sure. He fits that bill. Uh, he is visiting Texas this Friday, okay, on an unofficial visit. He's going to visit in June for an official visit. He's got official visits to Texas, Texas A&M. These are all on the calendar. Uh, and he's got one in Missouri late uh, late May, the last actually last day of May. Mm -hmm. And then he's got Texas, Texas A&M, and Oklahoma in June. So uh, very much undecided. He wants to take he's going to take some unofficial visits coming up, including I mentioned Texas, uh, and he's going to be back I think April sixth or is it the spring game? He's taking two unofficial visits to Texas, one of which will be this Friday. He's got an official visit to Texas. All that sounds great, right? Multiple visits to Texas. Uh, the Longhorns are in the mix here, but playing from behind right now. And there's a surprise leader. If you know, if I told you, you might have read my story, so maybe this gives it away. But Texas, Texas A&M, Oklahoma, and he's got a Missouri official visit. Of those ones, who would you think would be the leader? Do you think maybe Texas, Oklahoma, yeah. A&M? Absolutely, yeah. And I was, and I did read through your stuff and was shocked. And I was going to ask you, like, what is it about Missouri? Yeah. Unofficial, unofficial visit has already happened 
yep. in in March, if I'm seeing the calendar correctly, Jason. And you mentioned May is the official visit. And I saw it in your notes. I'm going to let you tell everybody uh, it's a pretty basic reason, but why is it? I thought, is there a family deal? Did they grow up in Missouri? What is, what is it about the Tigers for him? Yeah, Missouri is the team to beat. I asked him at the end of my interview, just kind of, hey, is there one or two teams that everybody's kind of chasing in this group? And I said, I know that can change. Okay, as you take some visits, that can obviously change. And he goes, nah, man, they're all pretty even. Then he goes, you know what? I actually have yeah, Missouri. So, and I had talked to him at Under Armour and I, uh, up in Dallas three weekends ago, I guess it was. And I could just tell then, like, he really liked Missouri. And I asked him then, and I asked him again this weekend, I'm like, hey, man, I'm hearing a lot of Missouri buzz, not just with Lamont Rogers, Michael Fasusi, the five-star offensive lineman. From mm -hmm. Right. He right. loves Missouri, dude. He, In fact, there was a weekend when Texas had a junior day. He chose to go to Missouri instead of Texas. Uh, and he, Fasusi is really high on Missouri, too. So, um, and they, they both said the same thing. They just they love that staff. They have great relationships with that Missouri coaching staff, including the offensive line coach. That that coach, and I don't have his name handy, but that coach does a tremendous job. Because uh, I asked Lamont, I said, well, is it just because they hit you up more frequently than everybody else? Or do you just click with those dudes? And he goes, man, I just click with those guys. They're just really cool. They talk to you about stuff outside of football. So Missouri, surprisingly, is the team to beat right now for Lamont Rodgers. Again, he visits Texas on Friday. He's got other unofficial visits. That can change in a hurry, okay? But as of right now, uh, yeah, Missouri is in a pretty good spot. Now, interestingly with Texas, I think Texas is, is taking an interesting <clears throat> approach here. He said he, I think it's every Thursday at 2 p.m., so they've got it on the calendar. He has a Zoom meeting with Kyle Flood, the Texas offensive line coach and offensive coordinator. Wow. And, yeah, and they actually go through and watch film of, like, Texas practices and, uh, you know, off-season stuff. And, okay, here's the drills we do. And, look, this is how I coach this guy up, and this is how I developed him. Here's how he looked before. Here's how he looks now. So he's really getting some almost – I don't want to call it coaching because you're not coaching them. But, I mean, you're kind of seeing how Kyle Flood works. And they have weekly calls – uh, set up like again, I think it's every Thursday at 2 p.m. is what he told me, I believe. So, um, I thought that was pretty cool, pretty interesting. Michael Fasusi's done the same thing, but Missouri they're pushing the right buttons, not just from a football aspect, but from a relationship aspect. So, uh, keep an eye on the Tigers. And I know, you know, Texas fans and AM fans and Oklahoma fans will say, Oh, he's not going to Missouri when push comes to shove, he's not going to Missouri, guys. I'm telling you, the Missouri interest is very real right now. Yeah, that is really interesting. And if I am Texas or – and by the way, I love this too. The official visit back-to-back-to-back. A&M, June 7th. Texas, the 14th. Oklahoma, the 21st for Lamont Rogers. And if I'm those three schools, Jason, Texas and the two biggest rivals, I am paying attention to the relationship aspect of it. And those notes you got, I mean, they – and those schools are going to know that. But it's huge. And I was – I'd never heard. Have you ever heard of a? Has any recruit ever told you I've got a standing appointment every no. week with a coach? Not, you know what? I don't think in twenty something years I've ever heard that. I mean, guys say yes, I talk to the coaches every week, but especially not a Zoom call. No, and I don't know how long they've been doing it, but it's yeah. been going on for a few weeks at least because he had told me about it at the Under Armour camp, and he told me about it again uh, this weekend. So it's been going on for you know a month or longer. But yeah, I can't remember ever having a guy where I have a standing appointment with this coach at this time. So um, and the other thing about Lamont, he did tell me, hey, he is going to commit after those official visits in June. Like, So we're talking like a July, maybe August commitment. So okay. uh, Missouri's in a good spot right now, and we're kind of almost heading down the home stretch. So these upcoming visits for Lamont Rogers, who's a Rivals 100 member, he's a big-time national prospect. These upcoming visits are going to be big, including the one to Texas on Friday. So again, just to use that name, everybody knows we might be talking about a Colin Simmons territory in terms of when, like Colin was an August guy. So mm -hmm. get everything done in June. And then Lamont seems to be one of those guys that wants to get it out of the way before his senior season begins. Yeah. And honestly, most guys do. I mean, if, if, I, if I had to just wager a guess, I would say probably 80% of the guys I've talked to say, yeah, I want to commit this summer just to kind of get it out of the way before my senior season begins. And especially now, you know, so many guys are graduating early. They're going to sign now potentially earlier than they normally with the earlier signing period. So, uh, yeah, most guys, I think you're going to see most guys try to commit in the summer and not drag it out into the fall.
Do you also, this kind of goes back to the Kyle Flood thing. Do you also sense, I'm reading the, the your notes with Lamont, and once again, I'm reading a kid tell you, I want to be coached hard. I want to yeah. be coached honestly. I don't want them to sugarcoat stuff. And I'm just sitting here with a big smile on my face. Like, that's awesome. That's so refreshing. I wouldn't have been like that in high school. <laughs> I would have been exactly that. No, you got to tell me I'm good. <laughs> but do you are you are you getting more of that from these elite, especially the the elite level dudes the guys that are up at the top of the of the list that they want to be the absolute best they could be and they're and they like the coaches that are in their mind real with them yeah you know in Lamont that question came up when he was telling me about uh watching film and doing zoom calls with Kyle Flood and I said well how do you like his coaching style and do you feel like you could fit in with him and he goes yeah uh, I think the quote was like he's firm or something like that, but but fair, you know. And he said, you know, firm but fair. And uh, you know, I have I think Fasusi kind of has told me the same thing. And I kind of jokingly said, yeah, I've seen Kyle Flood. He is firm because I've seen Flood operate at, at if practice. That's, if and, that's what you want. That's yeah, what dude, you're yeah. But he is, man. I mean, the players love him. But like, hey, if you screw up or if you're not hustling, he's gonna let you know about it. And I mean, everybody in the in, in the yeah. One mile of vicinity is gonna gonna hear about it. So, but but yeah, Lamont and I think these upper echelon guys understand. Like, dude, they don't want, necessarily want to be coddled because that's not gonna make them the the best of the best. That's not gonna push them to be the best. Right. So, you know, they they want coaches who are gonna respect them, of course, and treat them like men uh, respectfully. But they also want to be pushed, and they just uh, they want firm but fair. And that, you know, that's what Kyle Flood does, and that's what Lamont Rogers said he likes. And I'm also guessing, Jason, it helps them moving forward. To me, nowadays, you got to be as honest as you can. One, because there's so much out there, social media wise, yeah. information wise. But once you get to campus, if you if you turn into a totally different coach, these kids have opportunities to leave now. So I think I would assume the coaches, if they ever did think about you know faking it or messing with these kids in any way, it's like, no, man, we got to let them know what it's going to be. So once they get here, they're not shocked by it. Uh, mm -hmm. another reason I think watching practice, I mean, KJ Lacey gets to physically watch a practice today and see how Steve Sarkeesian deals with, you know, a bad pass from Ewers or Manning. And, it, yeah. and, and it's got to feel, hopefully it feels real to him and gives him that idea. Well, and you know, I said this, uh, I, I was not able to go to practice this morning, unfortunately, but I went to the one that was open last week, last week. And <laughs> If I was counting f bombs from coaches, I probably got close to double digits in the 20th right. minutes we were out there. So one of which came from the top dog himself. So mm -hmm. um, you know, but but again, I mean, you got to be relatable. Uh, these kids have, I mean, they've been coached hard even at the high school level. Different staffs handle things different ways. I remember, uh, you know, Tom Herman's staff. They'd get on these guys a little bit. Ch Charlie Strong's staff. Boy, I've never seen a staff. A couple coaches in particular that would really get on these players and. Mm -hmm. You know, almost like just I don't know. So maybe maybe push the envelope a little too far. Maybe in my opinion, um, you know, Mac Brown never. I, I'm assuming still the same, but he never once or did not cuss at his players. He always told the story that he did when he was younger. And I think maybe Sally, his wife, or somebody said, "Hey, would you like someone talking to your kid that way?" So Mac handles things a little differently. But um, you know, this staff. I mean, they're not afraid. Hey, if you screw up, uh, they're going to let you know about it, and they're not going to pull any punches with with uh, how aggressively they're going to coach you up. But 20 seconds later, you do a good rep, they're going to love you up and to build you up too. Yeah. So, I mean, yeah, I think these kids can relate pretty well. And you're right, Chad. You can't be fake as much anymore because social media, everything's out there. All, like, all these guys know each other to these recruits now. You're like, hey, have you ever met this guy? I'm like, no, but we've been talking on social media for two years. So mm -hmm. um, these guys all know each other. They talk to players on the team. Obviously, you got the transfer portal. So you're right, man. You got to just kind of be yourself and and hope it meshes well with these players. And I think in Lamont Rogers' case, you know, he does like the way Kyle Flood coaches. And a quick update if you want uh, some of those notes, uh, more notes from Jason on Rogers, on Lacey, and everything that's going on right now. Check out orangebloods.com. Always great content coming out there. The message boards, all the different articles. You can look at the commitment lists. You can get access to uh, when I say, hey, I went back and watched somebody's video. You can go watch the Lamont Rogers video that I was checking out today, and he's mauling dudes. Uh, you can check it all out at orangebloods.com. Dot com. Jason, he, Lamont Rogers, is the badass left tackle at Mesquite Horn. Is he a guy at 6'8", 305 that you would not think of at any other position as he transitions to college? Is he just like 
hey man, that's your left tackle. There, that's your, you know, down the road when Kelvin Banks is gone. That's the type of guy that you want to just slide right in there. He could be, definitely could be. But if they can get a guy like Fasusi, who I think is a tried and true left tackle, just the way he moves, mm-hmm. then you could probably slide Lamont over to the right side if necessary. But yeah, he, I think he could handle uh, left tackle. So, I mean, you see, if you just watch, like you see him at camp and some of this film, he moves really well, Lamont Rogers does. He's good on the on the basketball court and stuff. So, uh, yeah, I think he could certainly be a franchise left tackle. To me, Michael Fasusi, though, is the franchise left tackle right. in the state. So a lot of that depends on who else is in the, on the roster, of course. But does does uh, Lamont Rogers have that kind of skill set, that kind of talent? Absolutely. Yeah, I'm glad you mentioned movement because watching that video, his feet are incredible. I mean, to move like to be that large and move. Yeah. And Jason, there are times where I'm convinced that the defensive lineman, or excuse me, the yeah, yeah, the D lineman on the other side, that he that his girlfriend is cheating on him with the linebacker and he's punishing the linebacker by just letting just letting Rodgers go get him. That dude is like stalking linebackers and safeties on a couple of plays, and I feel awful for those kids on defense, man. He's killing them. Yeah, he doesn't have a problem getting to that second level for sure, yeah. Whew. God, he is an impressive player. Big 79 for Mesquite Horn is Lamont Rogers. And again, those visits coming up, AM, Texas, and Oklahoma back to back to back. But don't forget Missouri. Jason told you right now they would be his leader because he is big time into relationships. That big human that likes big human relationships with his coaches. So Texas better get on that part. All right, recruiting hour on a Monday. Jason, let's throw another quarterback name at him. Um, and this is one that Unfortunately for me in my high school, I got to see up close when I got to see Duncanville. There's been talk of Colin Simmons and Alex January on the defensive side. Obviously, DeCorey and Moore on the offensive side. This is the dude that's throwing to DeCorey and Moore when people watch highlights. Tell me about Keelan, uh, Keelan or maybe Keelan Russell and what we need to know. Yeah, Keelan Russell, uh, he was one of the three that was awarded uh, Elite 11 Finals invitations. Okay, it was... KJ Lacey, Keelan Russell, and the other one was Kevin Sperry, who's actually an Oklahoma commitment. He was really good at this camp. But um, Keelan Russell's an interesting guy. I mean, he plays at Duncanville. He's committed to SMU. Uh, everybody goes through Duncanville in the spring, right, including Texas. Uh, so he's been in, in, in talks with Texas. He's coming to the UT spring game. He's kind of thinking, just in the mm-hmm. conversations he's had with Steve Sarkeesian and, and people at Texas, that an offer could come. So uh, from Texas, maybe on that visit, they said, hey, it's kind of funny. He said, "He said, yeah, they want to meet me and see me in person, uh, just kind of get to know my personality. They like to see, you know, just how you respond to things and maybe how you respond to a loss. I go, you're at Duncanville, dude. How are they going to see how you respond to a loss? Just, <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. No you never adver- lose. adversity. <laughs> exactly. But, uh, you know, but, but they just want to see him in person, meet him in person, because when they go by the school in the spring, you know, you can shake their hand, but you really can't get to know him and talk to him like that. So uh, they want to see him on campus for that April 20th spring game for Texas. He'll be there. There's a chance he gets an offer. You know, we'll see. It's kind of a a little bit of a slippery slope there because you got KJ Lacey. Although we asked KJ, the media members didn't say, hey, you know, would that affect you if a second quarterback? And he goes, nah, he goes, you know, I'll just come in and compete. And it is what it is. I I think he probably wouldn't love it, but I don't think it's going to cause KJ Lacey to, to run off and decommit either. Uh, Keelan Russell, he was pretty open about it. He goes, you know, um, I'm okay coming in and competing if, if it's a two quarterback class, but he goes, but you know, that's something you have to look at. He goes, there are other schools that are basically only recruiting me and saying, Hey, you will be our only quarterback uh, commitment if you come in. So he goes, you know, that's, that's appealing for a quarterback and it should be, I mean, you know, you don't want to sound like you're afraid of competition and I don't think Keelan Russell is, but it's also a business decision, right? So, so, you know, if you're the only quarterback and maybe there's not, guys stacked in front of you, the, the classes in front of you. Well, that makes sense. So he's committed to SMU. He's actually taking an Ole Miss uh, official visit this weekend, this coming mm-hmm. weekend. So that tells me he's pretty open. You know, I was looking at his stats, man. You know, you know him from Duncanville, but he's kind of a dual, he's not kind of, he's a dual threat guy. He can, he can run, but uh, you know, people kind of maybe a misconception there. He's uh, we've got him listed on rivals. Let's see, 6'3", 173. And that's probably – he might be taller than 6'3". Now, I think he told me probably he's about 6'4". But, dude, he threw for thirty, almost 3,300 yards, Chad. 74% completion 
Wow. 35 touchdowns against just three interceptions. So oh, this is a guy good. who's a pretty clean passer. And I watched him at that camp yesterday. He's got a live arm. Um, you know, I think he's got some polishing up he can do, certainly. But uh, he's got a lot of God-given talent. And I mean, he's already a, an accomplished player at Duncanville. He's a really good passer. But, uh, yeah, it's interesting. Texas, he's on Texas' radar. I get that question a lot. Like, who? Other, what other quarterbacks is Texas, Texas recruiting? And it's usually, the answer is usually is not really anybody that I'm aware of. But, but they are now talking to Keelan Russell, uh, trying to get him back on campus. They're not trying to. They are going to get him back on campus for that spring game, April 20th. And we'll see if an offer gets presented there. That could that could make things very interesting. He said he he kind of he grew up watching and rooting for Texas. So, you know, he could be a guy to, to watch closely if Texas wants to make a run at his second quarterback in this class. So in terms of the rankings right now, I see him listed as a four star for you in making that delineation. Would you consider him low four star, high four star? Is he a guy that you think eventually could be five star? Because I feel like maybe that elite 11 distinction and feel like things are progressing for him. I don't see what I would consider, Jason, a massive offer yet. With all due respect to UCLA and Florida, those were the two that kind of blinked. There's also Cal and there's TCU and you mentioned Ole Miss. But I haven't seen, uh, you know, Georgia, Bama, Ohio State, Texas, Texas A&M, Oklahoma. I haven't seen that list. So do you think he's about to start taking those steps and getting those kind of offers? Um, good question. You know, we'll see. Teams will go through and see him this spring. And I'm not sure when Duncanville starts their spring season. Probably pretty soon, though. So um, that if it's going to happen, it'll probably happen later this spring. And I'll tell you what, if Texas does jump on board with an offer April 20th, that sometimes can open doors because other colleges are like, okay, mm -hmm. hold on, you know, yeah, or you know, even if A and M does it or some of the you know, Oklahoma or somebody, uh, it just kind of takes that first one to, for those dominoes to start falling. So, you know, Rivals has him as a four star and he's ranked two forty two nationally, so he's just inside the Rivals two fifty, number forty two in the state. That's I think that's probably pretty close based on you know just kind of what I saw this weekend. I think he's got incredible upside. But he might be a guy that's going to need a year or two of grooming. And sometimes when guys play at a program like Duncanville, and this is more true for running backs maybe than quarterbacks, when they're just playing on a team that just obliterates everybody, sometimes it's hard to gauge those guys because you're like, okay, is it he that good? Or is it just because everybody around him is so much better than the competition they're playing? Mm -hmm. But with Keelan Russell, dude, I, I mentioned the stats. You can't fake that stuff, the accuracy and the touchdowns to interception ratio. So, yeah, I think he's a really good player. I think probably uh, right inside that Rivals 250 where they have him now, that's a pretty good mark for him right now. But I'm telling you, man, four years from now, this guy's upside is tremendous. So just with the natural, you know, the size and the live arm and his ability to move. So uh, I could see a few, three, four years from now, us talking about this guy, we're like, whoa, maybe, maybe we should have had him ranked higher. But I think where he's at now is probably a pretty good – pretty good spot for him. Yeah, he's fun to watch. For people who want to go watch that film, he can absolutely sling it. Uh, I see an official visit to Florida that's I, scheduled. You know, I didn't here. even know that. He didn't mention that to me, but I just saw that on his profile as I was looking. That, so that, yeah. June 7th to Florida, UCLA I mentioned, and then you got Cal, uh, classic ACC offer. Uh, and, uh, and he's got the UCLA, the classic Big Ten offer as well. Uh, <laughs> but uh, it's going to be interesting to see how that one progresses. Like you said, Jason, I – I thought the same thing. Is there going to be an offer that unlocks others? And mm -hmm. with all due respect to Florida, they're just not quite right there right now. And UCLA, you know, sometimes not those have to be. Yeah, Florida's not right there, but yeah, more of a local school might be the the one that kind of gets that thing rolling. You know, A and M, Oklahoma, yeah. Texas, maybe even an LSU. You know, obviously like a Georgia, as you mentioned, of course. But if one of these kind of area schools that really get to scout him and see him a lot. Yeah you know, put that first offer on the table, then you might see boom, 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 several others go down too. Yeah, he, he's fun too. There's a great highlight on his film where the play clearly, the defense is thinking, oh my God, we got to cover more and we got to cover this. And we got, and oh my God, the running back. And all he does is fake a handoff and he breaks free and just trots for like 80 yards. I mean, the because they're dealing with all the rest of it, like yeah. we were talking about. Uh, so five star the, running back, five star receiver. So again, I mean, I'm not taking it away from Keelan, but you, you're like, okay, man, DeCorey and Moore can make any quarterback look good, right? To some degree. So yeah, but uh, that's what so, you got to figure out, right? You got to figure out how good he is. So an SMU verbal right now, but is he going to continue to get 
you know, different UTSA is on his list, not to, you know, take Jeff trailer out of the discussion as well. Um, and SMU and UTSA would love for us to stop talking about Keelan Russell <laughs> yeah. and not have Texas offer Keelan Russell. Well, you know, up. Like, we don't even have, now that I mention it. No, I'm sorry. Ole Miss is on there as an offer. Cause he's, you know, I was, I was about to say, surely Ole right. Miss will offer him this weekend. And, you know, and that offer carries some weight. Lane Kiffin knows what he's looking for. So that's, you know, that's a nice offer. Uh, and then just to clarify, Jason, since we just talked about two guys that got them, when, when you're talking about K.J. Lacey and Keelan Russell getting the invite here to the Elite 11 kind of finals part of this, mm -hmm. how does it all – when I hear Elite 11, I just think, well, there's 11 quarterbacks there. Like, how does yeah. that all work? How many guys get the finals of that? You know what? I asked that question this weekend. It's more than 11. Okay. And <laughs> okay. nobody knew the answer. So okay. I'm sure if I asked Brian Stump, who's the the, the head of yeah. student sports, who does everything, uh, Brian would know the answer to that. But I was talking to other media guys. I'm like, it used to be true that they would take 11. Right. Now, you know, then they had the opening and now they take more than 11 and they pair it down to like 11 while they're out there. I don't even know exactly how it works. And nobody, I, nobody I talked to did either, but I, I know it's more than 11. So gotcha. Gotcha. More than 11 and less than a hundred. Is that fair? Like, is yeah, that that's fair. well, it's like the, the big 10 and having whatever many teams now. <laughs> you know? Right. Exactly. Exactly. But great news. If you're a Texas fan that KJ Lacey is now part of this group. And then just a name to keep in mind, Keelan Russell, the quarterback at Duncanville getting, uh, getting that love. All right, Jason, um, I mentioned earlier, we'll throw up the QR code again, orangebloods.com, your expanded thoughts on Rodgers, expanded thoughts on Lacey, the visits, if people want to really go look and, and break all that down. Uh, what else? A lot of it in my 321 column, probably be posted tomorrow morning. Okay. Uh, this coming weekend is uh, Texas Relay, so I'll be out there covering some of the uh, top recruits in the state region that will be competing there. So. We say it every week, Chad, recruiting never ends, man. So uh, always a good time to jump on board with orangebuds.com. There you go. And that is Jason Sukamel. The 321 is coming up this week. So be on the lookout for that. Uh, and the latest in recruiting, Texas has a couple more spring practices this week. And then I think I heard Sark say today the weekend is going to be, they're going to get the weekend off this week. Yeah, weekend? they're practicing Wednesday and Friday, which they moved it up. Easter weekend, I'm assuming, is why they did that. Um, so, yeah, uh, yeah it'll, it'll coincide with Texas relays, the practice. So, um, uh, yeah, you'll probably it's it's kind of tricky. Like guys who come in, they can't just run and then hang out and, oh, I'm going to pop over and see the, the football coaches. No, if they run on Friday, they then have to leave campus and come back like on their own that night or Saturday when they're not competing and then go see the Texas coaches. So Texas relays, you know, it's a good recruiting tool for the, for the football program, but it's not as good as some people may think it is because it's not always super easy for those recruits to just pop over there and, and see the coaches. Football. All right. There you have it. Your recruiting hour for a Monday. A quick reminder, Anwar and Alex were at practice today at the spring practice, which meant that they didn't have a show this morning, but they will have an old fashioned tomorrow morning at 9 a.m. So the very latest from them and they've already obviously gotten their notes on orangebloods.com. Should mention that as well uh, if you want to get some of their thoughts from it. But they will give you their latest thoughts on it coming up tomorrow morning at 9, uh, 12 o'clock with uh, House Divided with Ketch and myself. And tomorrow will be a Tuesday, so a modcast about this time, 4 o'clock or so, uh, with the modcast crew. Hopefully, Jeff Ketchum is back to 100% by that point and, uh, and ready to roll. But either way, we'll get you a modcast as well. Thank you for liking and subscribing and getting those notifications for Orange Bloods Live. The number of subscribers continues to grow, but it's just not growing fast enough for us. So get us some more subscribers. Tell someone you know. Tell your brother or your dad or your mom or your daughter or whoever it is you know that loves Texas uh, that they can subscribe. And it doesn't cost them a thing to subscribe to Orange Bloods Live uh, and, uh, and get it going. We appreciate your support. We are sitting here today. What's the number? 26 days till the spring game. And now we're under 100 days till Texas goes to the SEC. 98 days from now, Texas is officially an SEC team. That is Jason Sukamel. He's going to get back to the grind. Y'all have a good rest of your Monday. Take care. This is the recruiting hour, and this is Orange Bloods Live.